Welcome one and all to Bike Racing Without Mercy. Today's video demonstrates how I'm using my newfound knowledge from the Oxford Laboratory to create a training week based on my physiological needs, targeting my aerobic threshold, VO2 max and anaerobic threshold. Also taking more time to focus on the sensations, i.e. the heart rate, the breathing and the lactate in the legs. Starting by building the ability to recover from hard VO2 max efforts at a fast endurance pace with a variation on a familiar training theme. And as always, some strength work for more benefits than can be divulged in an intro. Plus, a little bit of time with Zwift's pace partners. And finally, garnishing the week with two ascents of Zwift's most boring but demanding climb, Ventop, being sure to stay 10 to 15 watts below my anaerobic threshold. Well, welcome, one and all, to a training morning a weekday training morning on bike racing without mercy. Putting into effect what I've learned recently at Oxford University with Adam Isherwood. I put together a personalised training session. It's a variation on a familiar theme, tempo is surges. I've just completed, or just about to complete, 20 minutes at just under 230 watts. 230 watts being my aerobic threshold. The point at which the muscles can no longer buffer and clear all of the lactate so some of it starts appearing in the blood. It's still very comfortable in the blood but lactate is present. This should be my endurance power, my top end endurance power. And as you can see, right now transitioning into 90 seconds at my VO2 max, 350 watts. After 90 seconds, back down to below 230 watts because my aerobic threshold is 229. Two and a half minutes recovery at that and then back to another 90 second VO2 max surge. 10 VO2 max surges in total. Not sure how hard this is going to be. It's a bit of an experiment. We'll see if I make it through the 10 surges. And back down to 229 or less. Well, you can see that I've transitioned now to just back below my aerobic threshold, i.e. 229 watts. And then my VO2 max surges are where my VO2 max peaks, 350. Really focusing on the cadence here. These 90 second surges really bite. Controlling the transition of power here. It's going to be a hard session. Eight more to go. I'll report back. These are proper hard. And of course, what I'm trying to do here is get used to surging for a little bit longer at my VO2 max, creating all kinds of lactic acid and therefore waste product in the muscle and blood, and then dropping back to the maximum level that I can really ride at and hope to recover and clear all that waste. Here we go. Sixth VO2 max surge. Now, transition, manage. Alexa, clear lactate. Coming up for the eighth VO2 max effort. This could well be the last. Really struggling now, as you can see. 90 seconds at top end VO2 max power is tough. Plus you need to remain vigilant during the transition back to the tempo recoveries, bleeding down the power in order to avoid a collapse and then trusting the lactate will be cleared. Really struggling here to get back to just below 229. 10 and final VO2 max effort. Proper emotional.
The blue, green, yellow and red power profile shown at the bottom of the in-game footage denotes zones 2, 3, 4 and 5, as derived from my recent 20-minute FTP test, which was 288 watts. But as you've heard, I'm not focused on these traditional training zones, instead targeting my physiological thresholds, here for the, well, let's call them the semi-recoveries, here targeting my aerobic threshold, my VT1, in order to work hard but still clear the lactate. And then for the VO2 max surges, I'm working seriously hard, focused on 350 watts as derived from the three minute ramp test in the lab. Halfway. The issue with the traditional six zone approach is that the training zones do not give an accurate indication as to where we are transitioning from one physiological threshold to the next. For example, my aerobic threshold, my VT1 of 229 watts, should ideally lie at the top of the blue endurance zone two. But as you can see, it sits at the bottom part of zone three. And of more concern is that the traditional approach creates a wide zone four, for me spanning 262 through 304 watts, when in reality, my anaerobic threshold of 270 watts or 288 watts as per my overstated FTP test actually lies in the bottom half of traditional zone four. When in reality, this anaerobic threshold is a key physiological inflection point where we start using our anaerobic energy system and therefore it should be at the very top of zone four. Conversely, I also discover that the traditional six zone approach may cause you to not work hard enough for your VO2 max efforts. Equally, the use of the standard five zone training system may mean that you don't train your VO2 max sufficiently hard enough. You'll see I set those 90 second VO2 max surges right at the top of my VO2 max power range per the lab test, 350 watts. And as Dr. Dave said in the Oxford lab back in August 2021, and Alan verified, it's good to train your top end power, your VO2 max, uh, hard. And 350 watts, trust me, for those 90 second surges is proper hard. And if you look at the standard training zones for Zwift, zone five, you know, for me, as I say, starts around about 303, 305 watts. And that probably isn't enough intensity to really create that top end power adaption. So I'll probably do a few more of these training tests here on this particular program and see how I progress. But that was proper hard. Super happy to get it done. Going to do a little bit more VT1, then carve up and get into work. Catch you in a bit. The following morning, strength happened. Compound lifts work in multiple muscle groups at the same time. Deadlift, bench and chin up for power, flexibility, preservation of muscle and stronger bone density. What's not to like for the cyclist? So after completing the strength training in the gym, hit back to the flat, took on a few work calls, plus some dates. Loving the dates at the moment. Protein shake. And now I've got an hour and a half just to quickly jump back on the bike. And I've gone for the pace partner A Anquetil. Now I found that generally Anquetil is riding at 4.2 watts a kilogram. But if you're in this draft, you're sub four. Save on the climb. So you're taking the epic now. I'm going to take the opportunity to practice my out the saddle riding technique because I've been doing a lot of inner saddle work recently and I don't want to get stale out the saddle. Just aiming to stay a little bit below my anaerobic threshold of 270 watts. That's about 4.2 watts a kilogram. So just coming to the top of the epic. All of it other than a mini descent out of the saddle feels good. I've achieved a nice equilibrium in terms of the heart rate, stable in the kind of 164 to 166 range, and definitely no issues clearing the lactate in the legs. 
only two of the key signs that you're training well below your anaerobic threshold hopefully just below now let's see if Monsieur Anquetil does the bonus climb I think he does, I do it does feel nice to climb the right side of the rev out of the saddle feels good if I edge much over the 270 the heart rate starts to increase indicating that is indeed the point at which I'm going above my anaerobic threshold the good thing about a pace partner is on the downhill I still have to put down decent power not 4.2 watts a kilogram but still got to keep that nice cadence and pedaling technique going and thus ends an hour with Monsieur Antiquil a really good way for me to get in a nice training at just below my anaerobic threshold gonna do half an hour on brevet to cool down about three watts a kilogram that is and then crack on with work and you can see on some of the flat bits in Watopia you know quite nicely below uh, the anaerobic threshold it's really zone three and then um, when I was mucking around to start the recording I got dropped and you see a little spike of power to get back onto Anquetil actually easier to get back onto Anquetil than Brevet because the group's only about five or six people isn't going as fast and Brevet if you get dropped boy oh boy oh boy is that horrid to get back in sometimes anyway on with Brevet just coming to the end of an hour as it turned out with Brevet it was quite a fast Brevet a lot of people pushing the pace so by staying at the front I reckon I've averaged just in and around my aerobic threshold, my VT1 229 watts we'll see in a moment but definitely felt good felt like a nice endurance pace was able to experiment with different cadences and also listen in on a conference call at work heart rate's been about 155 it's crept up there because we're mucking around with the camera and talking oh, 239 average, that's actually 10 watts higher than I've been aiming for just above the aerobic threshold so there's been a bit of lactic in the legs but the body really easily able to clear it and obviously a pretty stable heart rate it was in the 145 to 155 range right up until the very end there where I started to talk you can have a look at the power and you can see here on the timeline a little bit more yellow in amongst the green than I'd otherwise expect um, for a brevet pace it'd normally be a bit blue and green but it certainly was a fast pace being set at the front and that's why I kind of guesstimated that if I kind of sat in and around the front um, I'd average to 29 uh, but it clearly a little bit more well hopefully it's been interesting to see how I'm personally incorporating some of the lessons learned at Oxford University in the laboratory into my own training program as I head towards the Mallorca 312 with Moray at All Things Ride but also a week on Saturday I'm out to Italy um, with Garda Bike Hotel to take on the Strada Bianchi Gran Fondo properly looking forward to that hoping for some decent weather and some beautiful film Clearly yesterday, targeting the aerobic threshold, 90 minutes riding at my VT1, 229 watts or so, but also including within that a block of 45 minutes to add in a bit of high intensity with those 10 times 90 second VO2 max surges. I definitely think you have to work the VO2 max hard in order to get the good benefits and definitely that's a proper emotional workout then moving on to today obviously the strength work in the gym the deadlifts and the upper body i'm a massive advocate of the benefits of the strength training whether it's building strength and power enhancing flexibility better able to kind of hinge at the hip avoid injury um, on the bike but also building strength through the posterior chain and the core better able to get out the saddle therefore and practicing a bit about the saddle with monsieur and quetil um, on the pace set of there up the epic really enjoyed that targeting just below my anaerobic threshold and definitely felt good in that equilibrium with stable heart rate and clearly the body able to clear the lactate that was accumulating in the blood and then moving on to a little bit here as you saw of brevet i was really targeting vt1 my aerobic threshold or below but obviously ended up a little bit above that got a bit too enthusiastic on the pedals i guess but nonetheless 
Thoroughly enjoyed the training. Tomorrow's going to be a rest day. Friday will be nice and easy. A little bit of zone two ahead of a Zwift race on Saturday, which is going to be my other bit of intensity for the week. And maybe a bit more endurance on the Sunday. Second ascent of Ventop. Just coming towards the end of the steep section. 10 kilometer steep section. Targeting just below VT2. Just below my anaerobic threshold. Heart rate starting to drift up now. So I know that while the legs feel good and the lactate feels controllable, I'm starting to dip into my anaerobic reserves. First ascent was about 260 watts, felt good. Much of this ascent has been about the same. We'll see if I can hold it. Obviously talking causes the heart rate to drift up. Let's see if I can bring it back down. Looking forward to getting back in the saddle. Training difficulty, 100%. To make it that bit harder, I reckon 75% feels about realistic versus a 32 on the back for me when I'm outdoors in terms of when I run out of gears as the gradient steps up. Just coming to the end of the second ascent, proper hard work this. Just getting used to grinding. A big gear, well, it's my lowest gear, but trying to stay seated in a nice circular pedaling stroke. Got to get out of the saddle here. Hard work that. I reckon about 260 average for that one as well. Just gonna warm down by descending and I'll report back. Well, the same completed, and once upon a time, I'd have just got off the bike and had a shower at the end of the second ascent. However, I've learned the value of taking the time to descend. Keeping the power nice and low, zone one, way sub my aerobic threshold to spin out the legs at a nice high RPM, 100 to 110 RPM, to help the process of clearing all of that metabolic waste. I understand that spinning the legs helps turn some of that into water, which helps the process of recovery. Let's have a look at the power curve. And there you have it. Two pretty consistent climbs. And definitely, it helped being disciplined with the power. You can see a few times when I've gone over my anaerobic threshold, but in the main, you can see I kept it nice and disciplined. And even on the, the middle descent, I kind of kept it sort of sub 220 watts, um, just to avoid the legs shutting down. So really happy with that. And definitely at this power, I could feel um, a good equilibrium. And you can see that on the second ascent, right the way up until I guess for about, I don't know, 40, 45 minutes in where the heart rate starts to climb. Um, but to be fair, I was also ramping the power a little bit and I was up and out of the saddle talking to the camera, so that didn't help. But pretty consistent, obviously after an initial ramp up in the heart rate uh, for the first climb. And therefore, you know, the sensations in the legs, the ability to keep going, kind of told me that, yeah, generally I was nicely below that anaerobic threshold. So kind of building on last week's video where Adam said, look, if you don't have access to the lab, what can you do to kind of figure out where your anaerobic threshold lies? Well, you can do that 30 minute ramp a little bit below your FTP, at your FTP and above your FTP and feel the sensations, look at the heart rate, feel the ability to clear the lactate from the legs. Are you able to maintain kind of nice, even controlled breathing? And if you are, 
um, they may be up the power and if that's still the case and you up the power again and then things start drifting upwards, the breathing becomes less controlled, you, look, you kind of are honing in on your true physiological anaerobic threshold and I'm kind of experimenting with that at the moment. But the power of knowing where, or for me, you know, within five watts, where that anaerobic threshold lies is evident here. You know, I'm not really often eating in to my anaerobic energy reserves and therefore able to sustain good power for longer. Anyway, hopefully this week of training was pretty interesting, seeing how I'm implementing findings from the lab. But in the meantime, whoever you are and whatever you do, please remember to live, thrive and stay healthy. Take care.